you can count on me to get things done. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Isle channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. And closing off the 70s, we have Lee Dion, veteran general who served under South Sao. Before we jump into uh, how Lee Dion's changed and you know everything about Lee Dion, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see where Lee Dion ranks at and why he's down here at 70. In the first popularity poll, Lee Dian ranks down at 71st with 306 votes out of a total of 75,000. In the second popularity poll, he ranks all the way up at 56. And then in my personal rankings, Lee Dian is down at 63rd, putting him at an average of 70, and he's closing out the 70s for us on this list. So Lee Dian, like I said, is a veteran general who first served Cao Cao. Uh, he joined with his uncle, Lee Qian, and uh, he was first tasked with minor deeds and didn't really play a big role in uh, you know the armies and stuff like that. He was a very notable name, I would say though, because he's been in the series since the second game, and uh, people who have played the game, at least some of the older ones, and you know potentially still playing now, will definitely recognize Lee Dion, especially you know since he's been in the game for so long, going against him, fighting him. You know he was a generic NPC for so long. He was always around somewhere, so you know recognizing his name. Uh, was not too difficult and because of that and because of how I guess recognizable his name was and just because of how you know the roles he played in some of the earlier games as an NPC he was one of the many popular choices for Wei before his playable debut so developers finally gave in to his, to the request for uh, making Lee Dion a playable character and they put him in the game in the eighth installment so Lee Dion's only been in you know two main series for the Dynasty Warriors game Dynasty Warriors 8 and Dynasty Warriors 9 and uh, they believe his historical contributions would be interesting ads for Zhang Liao and other characters at Hefei. Hefei is probably one of the biggest battles that Li Dian is a part of and uh, the games that he is a playable character in. That's really what his cutscenes revolve around. Of course, the introductions, he has those cutscenes as well. But a lot of his cutscenes revolve around uh, Zhang Liao, Hefei, and Yue Jin. And I'll get later into that when we go over his relationships with uh, those two characters. But first, let's start off with Li Dian and how he's changed from the 8th game to the ninth game. Uh, not a lot has changed. Start with his appearance. He pretty much looks the same. In the eighth game, he's got uh, like more armor based, you know, stuff on. And in the ninth game, he's got like kind of a robe slash armor uh, get up. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. He's still got the scarf on, uh, same hairstyle. I mean, he looks pretty much the same in both games. Not much difference in his looks there. Let's go ahead and talk about his weapon stuff. In the first game that he's a playable character, Dynasty Warriors 8, Lee Dion gets the wield halberd. And then in the latest game in Dynasty 1, Lee Dion receives the Guan Dao, which is the exact same style as Guan Yu, which I don't technically agree with. I, I don't think that he should have been given, you know, they had to clone a lot of the weapons and stuff like that. And um, if I had to choose a weapon, I would have to go with the one that's the same as Guan Yu's because the Wield Halberd, it was it was fun to play as. I'll give it that. The Wield Halberd was pretty cool. It had some pretty cool Musao attacks. And uh, it was pretty interesting throwing the, you know, the little pieces off and it would come back to you and stuff like that. It was, it was fun. Realistically, it was not, you know, it's not a realistic weapon. And to be honest, when Lee Dion was first introduced into the game, he was one of the people that I never really played as because of... His weapon style, and then the way he looked, I was never really attracted to playing him. Does that make me he didn't really look like a cool character to me, so I wasn't really, you know, attracted to him like that. Does that make me but uh, the Wheeled Hybrid was pretty fun to play as. He's got some pretty uh, cool Musaos. I like the Musao attacks with the Wheeled Hybrid. And then the one in Dynasty Warriors 9, they're pretty cool too. I mean, it's a basic, like, Musao. It's nothing fancy, um, but I can't complain. I like it. I actually like his Musao attacks in both games. And I definitely prefer the Guan Yu weapon over the Halberd style, even though it was a pretty fun style to play as. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for his weapon style. He doesn't, I mean, that, that's the only two games he's been in. So not much to discuss there. He just goes from the Halberd to uh, Guan Yu's weapon, the Guan Dao. Now, before we talk about his relationships, let's talk about a couple of his, you know, personality that Li Dian has. Uh, he's a witty and resourceful individual, and his words and gestures can at times befuddle his closest allies. He's an interesting character. One of the characteristics I guess he has is like this intuition where I mean they make it really evident in you know Dynasty Warriors 9. Dynasty Warriors 8 it wasn't as bad but he's always saying something along the lines of something doesn't feel right or it's like kind of like a foreshadow. He's kind of like foreshadowing what's happening throughout the game and stuff like that 
And uh, like, for example, in Dynasty Wars 9, the Battle of Wan Castle, when the, you know, the assassination happens and they the ambush and Cao Cao and Dian Wei are, you know, ambushed and they're getting attacked. Before that happens, you know, Lee Dion's outside the castle with everybody else talking about, you know, something don't feel right, something's going to happen. And of course, he can't say, oh, I think that, you know, they're going to get ambushed. He just, you know, he's, it's a very vague kind of term. And I don't like the way he comes across with it because I feel like he is intellectual. I think I feel like he's smart enough to convey what he's saying. But that instance, and specifically with, especially the Juan Castle one, he's sitting there saying, I don't know how to convey what my gut feeling is. It upsets me that I can't put into words when I hear all of you speaking in such a logical manner. I'm sure it would be useful if I just knew how to convey it. Uh, of course, for somebody who's played the game, of course, for somebody who knows the, you know, the sequence of events that's supposed to happen, it's, you know, they're at the Battle of Wan Castle. And of course, you know, is about to be attacked. Why don't you just tell them that? He can't just tell them that because, you know, it's, it's part of the story and stuff like that. Nobody knows it's going to happen, so... But he could have found a way, or the developers could have found a way to tell, to make him say, hey, you know, something don't feel right, let's go check on him, you know. But they waited until they were called for reinforcements, and then by that time it was too late. Dion Wei was already injured, he ended up dying, and uh, the following events, and, you know, that's pretty much how it went there. And then the other little thing about Lee Dion, it doesn't affect his personality or anything, it doesn't add a characteristic to him, but... Uh, the death of his uncle, which was caused by Lu Bu when they attacked uh, Xia Pi and Chu Province, taking the castle and all that. Uh, they do highlight it in the game, and Sao definitely has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him, which is pretty cool to see. Li Qian refused to submit to Lu Bu and resisted him to the very end. As a result, Ding Tao was able to hold on, and we maintained our base at Xu Chang. Li Dian. Your uncle was a true warrior. I know my uncle would be able to rest in peace upon hearing you say so, my lord. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the one, like, quirky personality characteristic that he has. It's very evident, so, I mean, that's unique to him. Not a lot of people, I don't think really much anybody else has that. In Dynasty Warriors 9, a lot of characters say the same thing, like, oh, I don't feel like something good is going to happen or something bad. Like, a foreshadowing is a big thing in Dynasty Warriors 9. Uh, but Lee Dion is probably the strongest out of that. That's probably what's closer to him as a person and as a character in the game. The intuition, the premonitions, like they say. And uh, kind of like a, he's almost like a fortune teller. <laughs> They're going to him looking for a reading on what's going to happen and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not too fond of that characteristic. I just, you know, it's part of him. And uh, it makes Lee Dion, Lee Dion, I guess. All right, so let's go ahead and go over his relationships now. Li Dion really only has two people he has a really close relationship with, and that is Yue Jin and Zhang Liao. Probably Yue Jin over Zhang Liao because uh, whenever Li Dion has been introduced in the you know eighth and ninth game, it's always in a pair with him and Yue Jin. They're like a dynamic duo. They're together. Um, they're like you know buddies, best friends, all that stuff. Very close to each other, and uh, they fight together. And you know Yue Jin and Li Dion both respect each other as officers. Probably, I would say, to go as far as saying, like, Swarm Brothers and stuff like that. They're really close in both the games, and uh, they both make their debuts in Dynasty Warriors 8. So when they're both introduced, you know, they're coming in together. And then, of course, Zhang Liao. So the reason that Zhang Liao and Li Dian were so close is because of the Battle of Heifei. Uh, the Wei Kingdom, Zhang Liao and all of his... I mean, they were heavily outnumbered versus Sun Quan. They had to split their forces. You know, half most of the forces were going to Hanjiang. And then, you know, they left behind Zhang Liao, Yue Jin, and Li Dian to take care of Hefei. And they ended up winning the battle. They ended up winning the battle. Uh, and that's what made them closer. I mean, there's, like I said, there's a few cutscenes around the Hefei battle with Li Dian, Yue Jin, and Zhang Liao. I mean, they held off against a heavily outnumbered group. They were very heavily outnumbered, but they did win the battle, which strengthened their bond. And uh, they ended up sharing a mutual respect through that battle with each other. So um, that's probably the only other special relationship he has within the game. But that's pretty much it for Lee Dion. We went over his appearance, weapon style, and relationship with the other. And then his unique characteristic with his personality. Some of the officers have it, some of the people in the game have that, and he has that specific one. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of it for those who don't know who Lee Dion is. And uh, yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll be back here for number 69 here very soon. Finally, out of the 70s, getting closer and closer to those higher numbers. We're going to be getting to better and more popular characters very shortly. So those would be very interesting to do. 
and I'm excited to get to them. But leading on is number 70, and like I said, we'll be back shortly for number 69. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely appreciate a like, comment, subscribe. And uh, if you guys use Leadion or if you guys got any comments, let me know down in the comment section. But I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.